looking at these two teams, obviously it starts with the head coaches and Dabo Sweeney's personality, the way he runs his uh, runs his guys is so different than Nick Saban does. But Nick Saban's had so much success. Is there an advantage or disadvantage either way? Because I think there's a contrast of styles that's going to be on display tonight as well. Oh, there, there's no doubt that they're different personalities, different lines of communication with their players. There's there's no doubt about that. Obviously, there's no disadvantages to to Nick Saban's uh, process as he calls it. So that's uh, now the question is is uh, Dabo Sweeney's uh, style as far as his personality and his players and his looseness, his emotion on the sidelines and, and, and all that and how it relates to team and team performance. Uh, we'll see how productive it's going to be. But 14-0 obviously proves it's pretty productive. I think this is about their fifth 10-win season. So a lot of things go into that. But I think his coaching style and personality is one of the reasons for their success. Yeah, no, it, it certainly is. And when you look at, at Dabo Sweeney, and I'm sure you've gotten a chance to, to talk and know him a, a, a little bit, uh, he's a special guy, and I think the success has been long in the making, and, and now he's getting his just dues. He looks like he's enjoying this. Uh, that's beneficial to a squad, too, I would think, because this is, a, this is a tough stage to be in a national championship game for a Clemson team that's been 34 years uh, since they last uh, got to play for one. Uh, what, what's the emotional state at Clemson right now? Well, uh, of the program? Yeah, exactly. Oh, Overall. well, it's their sky high. They hadn't won a national championship since 81. And, you know, when I was in coaching, I spent 11 years coaching in the SEC, 19 years in assistant. When I looked for a job, I said, man, if I if I ever become a head coach, if I could, my preference, obviously, being born and raised in the South, was Alabama, Auburn, LSU, Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, Clemson, and North Carolina. And I picked Clemson and North Carolina because I thought they had the best chance to be successful. Uh, North Carolina, these really these state school and a pretty good recruiting state, and then Clemson had an SEC environment, uh, but they were in, in the ACC. So I thought for a long time it had great potential, and that's one of the reasons I chose it. And I got a great fanatical fan base. Uh, it's 365 days a year. Uh, it's definitely part of uh, of religion in that part of the country, and at Clemson, uh, very uh, very in, uh, intense fan base that. Uh, that uh, any t- and any time you, you you coach at a place that's won a national championship, they obviously they have an opportunity to do it again. So mm-hmm. they've got all the ingredients there at Clemson to to, to be successful. Well, we're talking to Tommy Bowden, of course, uh, former Clemson head coach, spent some time on the Bama staff as well. What was that eighty seven, eighty eight? You were at Bama with the receivers, right? Seven, eighty eight, eighty nine, three yeah. years, and you know, and of course, coach Coach Dabo there while he was there as a as a walk on wide receiver. Oh yeah, well we know that ACC Network. That's where Tommy is now. We co-host the ACC Blitz. Yeah, and and before we get into some of the matchups and actual predictions on tonight along the lines to follow up Tommy what Tiki just brought up about the sustainability of the program to be a little more specific you look at some of the blue bloods in college football Bama the Buckeyes Notre Dame Michigan USC what is the main difference if you can pinpoint one uh, for a team that has constant success versus one that has sporadic success but is always kind of on the on the radar of, of, of being a blue blood. What's the one separating force, if, if that makes sense for you? Well, well there's, I think there's several ingredients, but you had to pick one. I think it's got to do with the administration and their philosophy on the importance of the football program. There's that old saying that a lot of schools want to be in the SEC on Saturday, but they want to be in the uh, Harvard and Yale uh, Monday, through, uh, <laughs> Monday through Friday. Yeah. And the administration's got to understand uh, – uh, the, the facilities arm race. Clemson has jumped in that full fledged. Uh, six months before I left, or the nine years I was there, we were in preparation of moving to a fifty million dollar facility upgrade, and uh, they've improved since then. So I think it's a commitment from the administration. If you've got that, and taking tell you a little bit with his background, you know, there's academic restrictions. A lot of them in the ACC. There's yep. some strong competition, and you got to have presidents that understand the climate and the environment, and will have uh, avenues uh, for the players to be successful academically because you got to keep them on track. you got to give them, them majors that they can be competitive in uh, academically. So uh, I think it's an understanding of administration would be the, the, the Okay. All right. So, Coach, let, let's get into the game. So here we are. You know, we're sitting on the couch. We're watching this. However, I don't know, 40, 50 million, however many tune in tonight on ESPN. And we're, um, I don't know, maybe seven or eight series. Both teams handle the football a few times. Who do you think is going to be definitively more aggressive and, and maybe get away from throwing jabs and maybe go for something big, Nick or Dabo? 
Well, it's interesting. When you look at Alabama and their, their uh, way they attacked Michigan State, they took a Heisman Trophy winner and more or less put them on the bench for the first quarter and attacked them in a way that most people, including myself, didn't think they would. I think it's going to be important whether how Alabama utilizes how much respect they're going to have for Clemson's defense and how they utilize Derek uh, uh, Henry early in the game. I think the key to the game is, is going to be one thing. Look at Deshaun Watson. You know, every head coach uh, circles a certain amount of teams. Say, if we can win this game, we've got a chance to go into feet. Mm-hmm. Clemson circled five games. They, they, they circled Notre Dame, Florida State, uh, South Carolina, the rival, North Carolina, Oklahoma. In those games, if you watch the number of rushes and how they increased, Deshaun Watson, 16 rushes, 16 rushes, uh, 21, 24, and 24. Yardage gain, 93 versus Notre Dame, 107 Florida State, 114 South Carolina, 124, 145 versus Oklahoma. Deshaun Watson says, hey, the bigger the game, I'm going to take it over. After that seventh or eighth series that you're talking about and evaluating the game, Watch how productive Deshaun Watson has been on the ground. Yeah. Not very productive. It's going to be a long day for Clemson. If he's getting chunks of yardage, if Alabama treats him like a quarterback as opposed to a tailback, I think that's going to be a problem for Alabama if he if, if Deshaun Watson productive on the ground. That's good so stuff right that, there. That's what wow. I would be looking at. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, there have been a lot of guys who have tried to run the ball against Alabama. They're number two in the na- – I think actually number one in the nation. There's only been 200-yard rushers on the day. And then I saw this uh, analytics of what Nick Saban has done with his defense because, you know, there are they are – we want the big boys, these 350-pounders in the middle of the field. But the way that offenses have changed and a lot of the spread, they got to get smaller. So now his D linemen are like 315 as opposed to 350. Does that help in this type of game against this type of quarterback for Alabama? No, oh, there's no doubt because uh, traditionally Alabama and a lot of the NFL teams, they want to play the, the game in between the hashes. They yeah. like to put concrete blocks down the hashes and, and play it inside toughness, man on man. College game has, its, has, has utilized now the whole 53 yard, the, the whole width of the field the multiple wide outs, the tunnel screens, the bubble screens, to make defensive linemen and middle linebackers run horizontally it used to be more of a north-south game. So there's no doubt by, by paring down their weight, as, as, as you mentioned, it's, it's more, uh, more productive defensively. The way, you, they, the way they're making blocks uh, make you uh, defend more space yeah. defensively than, than you used to. How much can Lane Kiffin, who was the offensive coordinator for, for Alabama, trust Jake Coker if – if Clemson is somehow able to shut down Derrick Henry, well, that's that's I think that's no doubt that's going to be one of the keys in the game. Is that and Alabama's got some skilled secondary players, Tankersley and Mackenzie Alexander. You know those guys are really challenging. Brent Venables, a defensive coordinator, plays a style on defense where he's going to pressure you mm-hmm. with try to get you more defenders than you got blockers and play a, a defensive uh, style and, and technique and secondary that challenges throws, puts a body on a body as opposed to backing off and playing a loose man. So that therefore the pressure goes on Coker and the Alabama wide receivers if they can do what you said, and that's a big if, stopping the big running back. Yeah. Go 